It's July 2nd and I'm back down at this food plot, this little corn plot that we put the hot zone fence around about a week ago. Checking out to make sure it's still clicking away and it is. So it looks like, and I'll walk the edges to see if the deer are jumping in there, but it looks like right now that they're not getting in there. The corn has come up quite a bit. Some of the spots where they were bare before, you can see some corn stalks now and the ones that were growing of course are getting a lot bigger, but these 90 plus degree days are are going to do that especially with as much moisture as we've had <clears throat> today we're going to build one more of these and when we get there i'll talk about the spot it's a pretty cool spot and uh, there's a lot of thought goes into this because i don't like spending three hours of work for no reason so we're gonna we're gonna be targeting a specific buck with this spot and i also want to compare sorghum to corn and talk about the differences on how the deer react to it and uh the type of food plots that, that each one of those produces. So we'll take a look at this one really quick and then we'll move on and uh, put up another one. Real Trees Midwest Whitetail is brought to you by Cuddyback, America's Best Bowstrings, Drake Non-Typical, Eastern Arrows, Frigid Forage, Fuse, Grizzly Coolers, Hoyt and Realtree. I'm at the second spot now, and this location is just up the hill from where I was hunting last year during the late season quite a bit. If you were watching the video blogs, there was a big eight pointer that I was after in an older buck we'd called Scarface. And that's probably not more than 250 yards away, I'd say down off the side of the hill and down into that bottom. So I planted some corn up here and took that redneck blind that I had on the trailer on that big bottom and moved it up here. It's a cool spot to hunt. I feel like if those deer are still living here, uh, that this is gonna be one of the places where we'd have a good chance for them. And then that redneck blind will be perfect because as you can see, there really aren't any very good trees around this where we can sit on this thing. So that, that blind will be ideal. So that's why this little food plot is here. But now if you look at it, you'll see that the deer have just been hammering this corn uh, unmercifully and obviously we're going to fence it which hopefully will end that part you know the corn that they've chewed down should snap out of it and grow pretty fast the uh, other thing i want to talk about is the difference between sorghum which i got planted on the front end of the field and then corn which i have planted here some people call grain sorghum milo you'll hear it go by both names same thing it grows about three feet tall four feet tall at the most nice seed head on top, little small round seeds. But I've used it over the years in areas where the deer density is pretty high or in small spots like this where the deer would just hammer your corn if you planted and left corn. Uh, they don't touch the sorghum plant during the summer. They won't even nibble at it. But just as soon as that seed head starts to get filled in, and it's kind of, they call it the dough stage because the seed, seeds are kind of doughy. They're soft, they haven't dried down yet the deer will just converge and start hammering that sorghum. So just be ready for that. It looks like they're not going to eat it and then all of a sudden it looks like they wiped it out. Uh, but it does make for a pretty good late season food source as well if you can get it past that dough stage. Uh, just wanted to kind of give you some options in the, in the places where people are planting row crops for deer. That's it for now. I'm going to, you know, Drake is helping me again today. We're going to get this fence around this about one acre sized food plot. And uh, I brought a little urea nitrogen fertilizer. I'm gonna spread it on here and give this another little extra dose. Hit part of that sorghum again, give it a little extra dose. And then we'll get out of here and hope that fence does its job and keeps the deer out of here. If it does, this is gonna be a killer spot come uh, sometime in November, I would say. Again, like I talked about in the last one, if you're gonna grow corn in small plots in areas with moderate to high deer density, about the only hope you've got of getting it all the way through into the middle to the later part of the season is to put up some kind of a fence. And uh, 
this hot zone system works really well. We've used them, like I said last time, several different years, a lot of different projects, and it's always worked for us. So I'll, I'll bring you updates on this spot and uh, show you how that sorghum is doing as we go into the, you know, through the summer and into the early part of the hunting season to kind of bring you along so you can learn with us as we try to figure out solutions for creating these little honey hole uh, hot spots for killing bucks during the season. Well, I appreciate you joining me uh, today. It'll be a few more days again and then we'll be back at it. I gotta get inside where it's cooler and kind of recover from this one, but it's uh, plenty more work to do, so keep checking back.